Right, remember last time we left at gushing over Judy, so... <laughs> Here goes nothing. Yes, you remember me, really? She just remembered that she gave us her old face. Yeah, I remember you. Your boyfriend kept yapping at me to talk to you. I ain't forgot him either. Did she really also remember Sterling? Did she know that he was in shock a millennium? T probably not. I bit my lip as she crossed her arms. This ain't my place, but you did good in telling that man what's what is all. Though, maybe not so loud, like. Why do they, why do they sound so weird? She grinned at me and I felt like puking rainbows. Puking rainbows? What a lovely thought. Yeah, I'm sorry, you're right. You stepped up next to me. I am amazed. You got her to both apologize and say you were right. Who are you and can you teach me how? She laughed and I introduced her properly. We got to talking and Judy told me about her record label, Seventh Beat Music. They sounded like they treated her a lot better than Dominic ever did. Judy and her band actually hung out with us for a long time. It was mind-blowing to get so close to one of the most influential people in my life but to a point that I, we could just laugh and drink like friends. Last time you'll see him. Unless we move recording studio, that'd be nice. I wanted so much to be her friend. That's not a good way to do it. I clung to Bu's arm when I got too tipsy near the end of the night, but nothing could have knocked just my smile off my face, not even remembering what that shithead agent did to us. Judy Genesis remembered me. She said I could look her up if I was in town. My life was complete. Eventually, I was too exhausted to even keep my eyes open. Instead of calling for his car, Bu and I walked upstairs to the hotel room and made the most of the night. We had a lot of pent-up stuff we had to get out, and I think he needed to be reminded as much as me that we made all the right decisions. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, presumably we didn't sit around and play, like, Monopoly at great length. I think by the time we fell asleep, we had decided that we had... Oh, I don't even know what's going on with my hair. You know, it's gonna leave it like this for the time being, right? Just violent. Yeah, that'll do. The media somehow found out that Clap Will We Smite You had turned down the invitation to perform at the AMPs. It didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out by who. Fans were outraged, not just at the AMPs, but also at us, our own fans. I feared that we were going to be pulled from the nominations entirely. Luckily, as the days went by, no such thing happened. We only had to sit through smear after smear in the tabloids about how stuck up we were. Shocker Millennium was coming out smelling like roses by the end of it. But it was worth it. We all agreed that I made the right decision, even if they hesitated before they said it. It was the right decision, but I was still regretting it. The only thing we could do was try to get the public to like us again. We had to earn their love again, and even if it had no bearing on the AMPs at all, I just felt it was important for some reason. I needed our music to be taken seriously above all else. <laughs> We've stolen music in the past, let's not... Uh, that was one thing that the band agreed to with no hesitation at all. Maximise band's popularity. It went down by 300. I saw that fucking minus 300. I swear. Oh my god. That was at the max! That was at the max! That was 995! <clears throat> Alright guys, well, there's going to be a lot of grinding, so there's probably going to be a big cut. Let's remember in February the 6th, and see the next time we do it. And by you do it, I mean see it. I don't know why I said do it. See it! A better addiction are you, a heavy song about wealth. Yeah, that's normally called cocaine. I'll write a five-star song! We're a god. We can only play at concert theatres now. Damn you, Happy Backwards! Ugh. Fuck it then, we're gonna play that new song. Let's do this, boys! Back to easy grids. That's a shame. I was getting used to the really, really difficult ones. Yeah, you see what I mean by really easy ones? Oh, Christ, no, we don't want to move that one. We want to move... Uh, come on, there we go. That one. The crowd went absolutely wild. We only gained... Oh, right, because we got everything in the hearts, we got even more money and popularity. I guess that's a good thing. We just need to co keep doing that and not, you know, fuck up. Easier said than done, all things considered. Keep playing gigs, then. Music is your excuse. An average song about frustration. <laughs> what? What sort of message are we going to get from playing that? Oh... We just, look, I have more problems by playing the songs. I fucking hate it. Also, an average? It's fucking four stars, mate. What could you want? Ugh. All right, so we're back up to uh, 900 popularity. So that didn't take too long, but here's where the decay really eats at you. It really fucks you. 
eight nine three. So we, you see what I mean? It's down by seven already. At least you can play at the arena. The popularity is slightly better though. Last page, a better addiction than you. I'm gonna just gonna probably keep the song up forever. This is it. This is all you guys ever get. This is what we're listening to until the rest of time. What the hell just happened? Do I have to start clicking? Oh, okay, there we go. We've got a new uh, monthly report in. It's not looking too bad. We've made a shitload of money. 33,000 and the monthly budget. It's not actually as much as I thought. I, maybe I'm greedy because we got like, you know, 60 grand the last month. But we haven't released any new singles. Maybe we should release a single. Nah, we need to get the popularity up. Money's worthless at this point. 933 already. Actually, after two gigs, we should be at max popularity again. So it will only take just over a month. Way! That'll be alright! See you there! Oh, we're so close! 993! Oh, alright, well, one more day. One more day. We'll always get popularity even if we completely fuck up the gig, so it's not the end of the world. Alright, that po that gig wasn't as good. We sort of fucked up the end. We could have got 300, but... I, it was a 50-50 with whether the last four were right. Regardless, it's now max, and it only took just less than a month. A lot less than I thought it would. I thought this was going to have to be a very long episode. Maximize band's popularity. Already did that, but thank you anyway. We had just finished recording a TV performance for a major network. Nicely unspecific. I cracked the door to take a peek outside to see if our ride was waiting, but I was suddenly blinded by flashing lights. Emmett poked his head out near me, but I pushed him back inside and closed the door. Did you see how many people are out there? The media awaits! Time was washed away with that little hiccup of turning down the AMP performance invitation. The media had forgotten that we were public enemy number one and our fanbase returned. It's been like 29 days! What in... It wasn't even a big deal anymore, and I doubted that it ever really was. It wasn't. You know what tabloids are like. I don't like it. How do you handle living in the tabloids view? Don't read them. But you read everything. We were loved and that felt really good. He also reads different things. Emmet. Th there is a difference between reading everything and not reading tabloids, buddy. People liked our music and all that other garbage didn't mean a thing to me anymore. I slipped on a pair of sunglasses. No, you didn't. How do these make me look? Do I look like a movie star? I've been practicing how to look harassed in front of the cameras. You don't need to pretend, you simply will be. Not pretty girls like me, especially beautiful girls like you. He brushed the hair out from in front of my glasses. It was a line straight from his lover routine, but I let it move me anyway. The ride's here. Anytime, you two. Our adoring public awaits. I marched to the door and waited. Bew was quick to open it for me, and I smiled. I was glad I snagged me, a true gentleman. Mm. I wonder whether the scandal is going to come out that we pretended to like each other, but now actually do. The other guys just shook their head at us and filed outside. <laughs> Look at this dude. Unbothered. Seemingly having no idea what's going on. Just sort of like hands in his hoodie like, Oh yeah, mate, I went down the docks. What's this? Like, <laughs> The cameras assaulted us in our eyes and a swarm of outreaching arms pulled at us as we worked our way to the limousine waiting at the curb. My cell phone began to ram. I fumbled with it as you eased me along with a hand on my back. I waved and blew kisses to all the fans while juggling my ringing phone. Their cries filled me with the happiness I always wished I would have. This was it. This had been my dream and now I was living it. Bew stopped and looked down at me as I brought the phone to my ear. He smiled at me warmly and that drew my attention more than the screaming crowd in front of me. Yeah, I'm a bit busy. Uh, I'm calling on behalf of... Who is this? Speak up! I bent over to sign a picture of myself, a fan was holding up. I'm calling on behalf of St. Luke's Hospital. What now? Who's this on the phone? What? You were the only contact he could give me before surgery. My smile faded and the sounds around me drowned out. Who? Robin? My eyes darted around at the, my fans, my dream. Was all of this worth? What was all of this worth is what that meant to say. We're not kicking it in, are we? I don't know who it is. Owen? No, he has a wife. The person whom we had an abortion with? I couldn't tell you. 
I stood outside his room for what seemed like ages. Bew stood quietly next to me. Should we leave? No. No. I found it hard to even swallow, but I came here, so I wasn't leaving. Would you like me to go inside with you? How in the world could Bew stand being in the same room as that man again? No, please, can I be alone? He thought carefully about his next words. Whatever he might say, do not let it in deeper than it should. I'm going to turn the music a little bit down. Uh, okay then. You've taken root in better soil. Do not let his storm wash you away. It's not sterling, is it? His advice was so convoluted, but I could... Oh, right, okay, because that's how we, we had the... Yeah, okay. But I could assume it was because he wouldn't allow himself to say it too bluntly. Seeing Bew with his heart on his sleeve was almost unnerving as the situation itself. Okay, I took his words to heart unnaturally quickly. I wouldn't be washed away, no, I wouldn't be uprooted by that man anymore. Bew pecked me on the cheek before leaving me alone to stand alone in the middle of the hallway. A nurse exited the room before me. Are you here to see him? He's just waking up. I nodded. I supposed I had no other choice. I inched my way towards the doorway, seeing how far I could get before he saw me. Fortunately, yep, yep, I thought so. Lel. Fortunately, Sterling was facing the window with his eyes closed. Maybe he fell back asleep. It was a relief to see that. For the most part, he looks okay. I've seen people look far worse after car accidents. I felt confident enough to approach his bed for a closer look. He rolled his head over and opened his eyes. I jumped back a little. Sterling had no reaction to seeing me. He must have been expecting me, huh? Funny that. He just stared at me, looking pale and barely awake. His hair was a mess and his eyes were baggy, letting me know he was truly at a loss. You don't look so bad. I had to break the silence. But he continued to not say anything, so I tried again. Why did you have them call me? His lips slowly parted as, they had been clo as if they had been closed for a long time. I imagine they have been. Because you would come. His voice was hoarse, every aspect of him was weakened. But I snorted. Yeah, I, su I suppose I was a predictable fool. He would always depend on using me. Well, I'm not staying, so tell me who else I can get down here for you. He looked away and up at the ceiling. Really? No one? What about your family? Don't have any. Why are you lying to me? He flinched. I was going to continue scolding him, but seeing him like this... The venom sucked the venom right out of me. I'm leaving. He jerked forward, causing him to hiss in pain. I stopped. Wait, Natasha? I blinked at him as he recovered. Call Natasha? Were they? Did they? I closed off that part of my mind. I really didn't want to think about them together. Joel? Wait, were they all in the same car? I don't know, it's just you here. He cringed, but he didn't recover this time. It looked like he might cry, but his eyes were so tightly clenched shut. Were there others in the car too? Jesus, are they her too? No. He shook his head away as he repeated a couple of times, so it was just him in the accident. He was acting off. Maybe the pain medication was doing something to his head. Maybe he's absolutely fucked off pain meds. That is something you could consider. Oh. Okay. I was as humble as I could get. I had looked up to this man to some point and then loathed him. He was a god and a devil, someone to be worshipped and feared. But now he was just a human, broken and vulnerable. Hated seeing him like hating him seemed like such a useless emotion. You want me to call them? He looked back at me again. He looked severely disorientated. Bringing up our rivalry wasn't even in the front of my mind. These people were once my friends and more. You already tried calling them, didn't you? His eyes broke from mine. For the first time, I pitied him, but I was confident that was all I felt for him. And yet, here I was. I was here and both Joel and Natasha were not, even though he asked them to be. Chris, what have you done? He grimaced at his name. Why won't they show up? Nothing. His voice shook. I walked closer to his bed. You push them away like you push me away. He shook his head. I noticed dried blood crusted behind his ear. They can't clean that up. Without thinking, my hand reached out to the side of his head. My fingertips grazed his ear and I could see him react. I froze, realized how e realizing how easy it was for me to slip into intimacy with him. I withdrew my hand like a guilty child, embarrassed for myself. Robin, I can't stay. He stopped trying to talk to me as I finally moved away from his cot. Places to be, shows to kill, you know. I did feel a twinge of guilt leaving him alone. Would he have felt anything leaving me here if I was the one in that hospital? But he'd probably come in laughing. <laughs> and let's remember the last time we saw him, uh, now a boyfriend punched him. Oh no, it was punched, sorry. Goodbye. I headed towards the door, but a man rushed past me and up to Sterling like he didn't see me. It was Joel. Sterling, my god! 
How are you feeling? I told you not to drive like that. You never listen. You never listen. Sterling looked past him and straight at me. Joel looked behind him to see why. Robin? Finally, someone else is here. I'm out of here then. Why are you here? To revel in his misery, clearly. Wait, really? Hey, wait! What? What could he or any of the rest of them want to say to me? Why did they involve me like I cared? Thanks for being here. I couldn't get here fast enough, so thanks. You don't look very rock and roll. It's... It's a horrible jumper for what is supposed to be rock and roll. I wanted to say something snarky or cruel, but I couldn't be upset with this man, with either of them. Yeah, okay. I swallowed and Joel shared a look with me. The last time he gave me that look was when, I, when we kicked out Dallas. So I had to break it. I turned to leave. Give me a piece of paper. I stopped. We both looked over him. Finally, Joel did as he asked. We watched him struggle to write something. When he was done, he folded the scrap of paper and held it out past Joel, whose hand was waiting to take it and straight at me. I gawked at it for a moment. Joel looked at me, almost like he couldn't understand. My steps were slow and hesitant as I approached Sterling for the last time and took the paper from his bandaged hand. Call him. He looked away again, back out towards the viewless window. Tell him where I am. I folded it open to reveal a long distance number and the name of C. Garland scribbled below it. This had to be the family he'd been hiding from me. I furrowed my brow with the audacity of him giving me a chore, but then I just let it go. He wasn't being vengeful, and he wasn't using me. He was asking me for a favour as one human being to another. If I have time. I looked once back at Joel's vacant expression and turned to leave. He said my name one more time, and his voice anchored me. I had enough pride not to turn around and face him. Good luck at the AMPs. I didn't know how to feel, so I chose not to feel anything at all. I simply left. That's a bad thing. You're not supposed to do that. Not feeling anything at the time means you'll just feel something at a later date, and it will be worse. We received immediate notice from a reluctant Dominic that the AMP committee had a spot to fill since Shocker Millennium was no longer going to be performing from the live award shows. I wondered if Sterling dropped out or if they just rejected him. The good news was supposed to be that they had requested Clap or We Smite You to play the show instead. But I couldn't feel the joy that I felt the first time we were told we were selected. I didn't jump up and down or shout. I merely told Bew to accept the invitation or that we were going to be there and do our best. And then I walked out the door. I propped my leg up on the pier's wooden fence. It was a particularly hot evening, but the beach was closed. I just stared at the distant water, completely out of it. Sterling, the AMPs, I sighed. I was trying so hard to get upset, but it just, it just wasn't coming to me. I didn't care anymore. I wasn't angry anymore, but that fire in my chest hadn't died. I still wanted to sing like there was no tomorrow, but I still wanted to be the best. So, what had this whole time been about? Money? Fame? A pair of warm hands began to massage my shoulders. Bew was standing behind me. Letting me know in every way he could be... He could... He was here for me. Having trouble spitting some of these centers out, for whatever reason. I wish his kisses would make me forget this, like they made me forget everything else, but they didn't seem to be working. Instead, we were just silent as I stared out into the sunset. Bew would try to talk to me and to get me o to open up about Sterling, but I brushed him off. He didn't need an index on my feelings, and I didn't want to give it. But the question he had asked me after Sterling punched him was ringing loud in my ears, and I think Bew was worried about that. Did I still love Sterling? I stood up abruptly and faced the pony-tailed man before me. I don't. I swallowed. I hadn't thought I would come to that conclusion so fast. Love him, that is. I don't. Not anymore. And maybe never. Bew rounded the bench to stand directly in front of me. Do not convince yourself you never loved him for my sake. I looked away, blinking rapidly. He's right. If I said that I never did love him, that would be a downright lie. What I meant is, I know what you mean. I looked back at him. How could he possibly know what I mean? Because he listens? How could he know that I meant to say that my love for Sterling was juvenile? That any one day with Bew was worth more to me than all of the time I spent with Sterling? Bew lifted one of my hands and I realised I was clasping the scrap of paper that Sterling had given me. Make the call. I looked down at it, he trusted me enough to call for him. It was the first thing he has given to me and not taken in a long time. I guess at the end of it all, there might be some shred of respect for me under those layers of designer clothing? Probably not. 
Or was he just using me again? I couldn't make up my mind. I probably should have thought about what I was going to say first, but that was more effort than the man deserved. After several rings, someone answered. Hello, how did you get my number? Uh, hi, I'm calling about Sterling Stone. I don't know anyone by that name. Really? Why would he give me this number? Are you C. Garland? Chris, you know where he is? He became panicked. Wait, you're not Garland? The C stands for Chris? That's my son. Where is he? What's wrong? Well, I'll be damned. If we're talking about the same person, he's in the hospital. Where? Uh, St. Luke's. No, I mean, what city? Yeah, I was going to say, come on. He's clearly ran away. Oh, I gave all the information I could to Sterling's father. Turns out he was across the country and they hadn't spoken in a long time. He asked who I was and I lied and said I was a nurse. He'll probably complain about my service to the hospital, no doubt, but I got the job done. I stood up and walked to the, def to the fence. It was too hot for this. I was too tired and too strung out. That man, Sterling, he was no longer part of me. His problems and his mistakes were not f uh, for him to worry about. I felt like I was about to collapse from exhaustion, but it was too hot for even that. The ocean water lapped against the sand below me. It looked cool and inviting, which was the first time for me. I darted for the stairs down to the beach and ignored the signs telling me it was closed. Sand instantly filled my shoes, but I didn't care. I kept running for the shoreline. What are you doing? I ran right up to the wet sand and stopped. You caught up to me and I grinned at him. You're not going in, are you? The beach is closed. I don't care. And you're afraid of water. I didn't tell you that. You didn't have to. The current rushed by my ankles and I was pushed forward. You caught me and held me by my back. He looked down at me with his brown eyes. There's not a dumb death scene here, is there? <laughs> that, what a way that would be to devalue this game, huh? If you know me so well, what am I thinking right now? I grabbed his tie like a leash and started walking backwards to walk into the water. It was unbearably cold, but I didn't care. He studied me. I watched his eyes dance between mine. He smirked. You are thinking about how fun it is to make people play games for you. I laughed and tugged on his tie once. Go fish. No? Nope. The waves crashed against my back in a normal state of mind. I would have feared drowning. How about how the ocean could swallow you at any point? You know, you really suck at this. All right, I concede. I stopped and he was able to tower over me again. What are you thinking right now? I'm thinking about why you followed me into the sea. I grabbed at the bottom of his shirt, camouflaging my desire to feel him up. Even though you said you were against bad relationships, he laughed and placed his hands over mine, guiding them up against his chest. I relished every inch of him. Excuse me? I am against bad relationships. Are you now? You're against this? He leaned down to a point where I could feel each word he said, with every atom in my body. Ah, is that why it feels so good? The water was too strong, though we weren't that deep. The feeling that I could lose control started to make me uneasy. Like a guardian angel, he wrapped his arms around me and anchored me in the sand. And like a devil, he got to choose where he placed his hands. It's your turn now. What am I thinking? With each roll of the waves, I crashed into him. That's too easy. Ooh, that's... yeah. The less it's said about what happened in that water, the better, and fuck, I hope there aren't any paparazzi around. I want to use a pun somehow revolve around the money shot, but the more I think about it, let's just not go there. 